An independent group of scientists monitoring climate change says that there's been no progress on lowering the forecast for global warming for a third year in a row. Their warning comes as countries are gathered in Baku, Azerbaijan, for the annual UN-sponsored climate talks. The focus at this year's COP is on setting new financial goals to help developing countries cope with the effects of climate change. Bangladesh's new leader, Mohammed Yunus, slammed rich countries responsible for decades of carbon emissions for not being willing to pay their fair share. And let's take you straight to Baku. We're joined now by Jennifer Morgan, a German State Secretary and Special Envoy for International Climate Policy. Ms. Morgan, welcome back to DW. Now, Germany's government, we have to talk about it, is currently politically paralyzed with the economy at the heart of its troubles. What does that mean for poorer countries asking Western nations like Germany for more support on climate change funding? Well, Germany is a is a strong economy. We are now moving forward with uh, elections, which will come early next year. And here we have a full mandate, a existing minority government. We are able and we stand by our climate commitments, whether that be uh, around the climate finance part. Germany uh, is actually often found to be one of uh, meeting our fair share in this. We do that out of our own reasons and also due to the responsibility that we have. Uh, and we're here negotiating for a fair and ambitious new climate finance agreement. Yeah. Uh, how much, you say you have a full mandate, but how much has the political crisis in Germany weakened your negotiating position there in Baku? We are uh, based on the existing government. Uh, it hasn't weakened anything. We're here very uh, clearly strong part of Team Europe. Uh, not only are we moving forward on our climate finance, we're also moving forward in our economic plan to decarbonize our economy. We're now at 60% renewable energy, which is helping drive down electricity prices in Germany. We have a stable grid, one of the most stable in the world, 400,000 jobs in renewable energy. Uh, and that is, as our leaders in Europe last week said, the cornerstone of our uh, competitiveness um, strategy here in Europe is the climate neutral economy. And we are working very hard and being quite successful in being the first climate neutral continent, 8% reduction from Europe just last year due to renewable energy. Now, uh, let's talk at what's really on the table here as part of the funding deals being negotiated at COP. How much is Germany willing to commit per year to combating the climate crisis? Well, what we're negotiating here really is a new approach to climate finance. It's about a 10-year collective goal. So it's going from 2026, moving forward to 2035, um, approximately, right? So 10 years, 2025, 2035. And the question is, okay, how can we be increasing the financing, increasing and mobilizing the funding for the poorest and most vulnerable countries in the world? Developed countries, including Germany and, and the European Union, have said already, we're ready to stay on that 100 billion commitment that is there and has been met uh, moving forward. But um, And we would be willing to go further and chip in more if other countries that no, do not have commitments right now would also chip in, those that are economically prosperous, those that are uh, large historical emitters. Um, we can do more if they come in. Are they likely to come in? Everything that happens at COP is famously non-binding. So is this really going to make a difference? Well, I think that, you know, the Paris Agreement is really a very resilient agreement. And we see that although the 100 billion was a political commitment, we have accountability and we stand by that accountability. And I think for other countries that are now uh, playing a leadership role, a, a role uh, wanting to have that leadership role across the world with that leadership role also comes responsibility and the expectations are large and the needs are great. So we need to all be working together uh, in order to get more finance and mobilization of private sector finance, which is also quite important uh, to those countries that need it most. And for that, we need more countries to come in. I think that expectation is clear and the pressure is also there. You talk about accountability. Um, global carbon emissions from fossil fuels reached a record high in 2023. The UN just now came out warning that 2024 is the first year the world actually 
cracked the 1.5 degree global warming target set in the Paris Agreement. So I really want to ask you, what's the point of COP if there seems to be no real political will to make the changes we need to avoid a climate catastrophe? There is political will. We would be on a much higher rise of temperature, up to four to five degrees are the projections without the Paris Agreement. However, we all need to be digging in and doing more. The European Union is on track for our commitment. Germany is on track for our commitment of a 65% reduction by uh, 2030. Uh, but we need all to come in. We need the next uh, round of uh, national climate plans, which are due next year, requires all of us to spiral up our ambition. The G20 particularly plays a key role, but we need these forums. We need the Paris Agreement because without it, there would be no place for the most vulnerable countries to be at the table. And it is about their very existence. So yeah. we are in a climate crisis. We need to move forward. And the good news is that the economy is actually shifting more renewable energy, double investment in renewables than fossil fuels last year. Yeah, I, I wanted to get into that all of us, especially when it comes to the G20 nations, because it, of course, includes the biggest polluters on the planet, among them the United States. And Donald Trump is widely expected to pull out of the Paris Climate Accord again once he's back in office. He promised to drill baby drill on many of his rallies. So how much is this presidency going to throw global efforts to tackle climate change off course? I mean, what I'm uh, experiencing here, but it doesn't need to be here, it's really about the economy. Uh, what we are seeing is uh, a positive tipping point in renewable energy and moving forward on that tripling of uh, renewables that we all agreed last year. As I said, double the investment in renewables than fossil, 85% of new power plants are renewable. And according to the International Agent Energy Agency, where these numbers come from, we will likely see an oversupply, a glut of gas in 2026 and a peak of fossil fuels in 2030. So if you're looking at big deals and numbers of where you can have prosperity for your country, this is the area. And what we are seeing is Germany and our over 40 partnerships with countries around the world is they want to go into this area of renewables and efficiency because they want and need the jobs for economic development. They need reduced air pollution for human health. That's and not what we've heard from Donald Trump insane. on the campaign trail, at least. And he's not expected to support any future funding deal on combating climate change. So uh, they're in Baku, maybe already. What alternatives are being discussed to bridge that potential shortfall? So the European Union and other countries here, uh, I can speak for the European Union, we are the largest uh, financiers for climate finance globally. We continue to move forward. We expect all countries, including, of course, the United States as the historical largest emitter, uh, to continue to contribute. It's in all of our national interests to do so. Uh, and we're working here with countries to, to forge an ambitious and fair outcome by the end of this COP. That's Jennifer Morgan, Germany's Special Envoy for International Climate Policy. Thanks so much for your time. You're welcome.